tell us just a little bit about your child, how uh, your adult child, how old they are, um, and maybe what their special interest might be. Hi, my name is Evan Dolores. Uh, this is my wife, Arlie. Our daughter is turning 18. In August. In August. Her name, her, her name is Althea. Mm -hmm. Or we call her Althea. Everybody just gives say Althea. Uh oh. Everybody's <laughs> calling her the wrong name. It's all right. But she wants to be called Althea. Althea. Uh -huh. I'm calling Althea. <laughs> call me Althea. All right. Anyway, yes. Um, she's a sweetheart. Sometimes. She won't follow, sometimes she will, but she's she, she would do her own thing and she will do her household chores. Yeah. And we're going to talk all about that. Hi, I'm Cindy Ron. I am the mother of Ian, who is 40 years old. Ian has Down syndrome. He um, works at Virgin Hotels, happily works at Virgin Hotels since April of this last year. He's a figure skater, and um, he's a. I described him at to, to somebody the other day. He's a goal-oriented, task-oriented extrovert. I am Jennifer. Earp. My son is Brayden. He is 23. Um, he is here. If he hears me say something he doesn't like, he will come and correct me. Um, so <laughs> that will be fun. He <laughs> loves movies. Um, he loves movies. All kinds of movies. We go to the movies several times a week if we can, if there's things that are showing. And um, he has been employed at Pinstack. He's currently in between jobs. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm um, Carol Lee. This is uh, my husband, Dave. Our son is Evan. He is 20. Um, you may know him if you, at Kroger. If you see Evan at the checkout, that's my son, Evan. He works there, and he works. He has an office job as well. And he loves to sing. He's part of the Frisco Corral. Aww. He's just a busy guy. <laughs> We actually nominated, and he won um, Student Employee of the Year oh, for the whole last year. area. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. for Dallas Area Vocational Adjustment Coordinator. Well, so. I think they said what two hundred districts or something like that. It was. Well, it was really, yeah, it works hard. <laughs> we're, we're not Employee of the Year. Um, <laughs> that is okay. Not yet. That's but, right. but your son does the best movie reviews. Yes. So I mean, we've all got strengths, right? Yeah. So. Um, I just want to make sure, can everyone virtually hear us? Okay. Perfect. I see a thumbs up. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So our first question to all of you is tell us a little bit about your child. Actually, tell us a little bit about your adult. It says child, but it's adult. But he, because they will always be your child. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yes. Um, their wrong. age, and some of you said that already, but tell us a little bit more about their interests and their daily routines. So we can just keep going. So, um, uh, yeah, like my husband mentioned, Althea is 17. Well, she's going to be an adult, 18. Mm -hmm. uh, like her regular day starts, like she has a routine going to school and stuff. <laughs> she does everything. The only thing is it has to be at her own time. You cannot rush her, but everything has to be the way she wants it. And her interest, she loves to sing, she loves to dance, she can be watching um, music videos all day, and sometimes I use that as a reward for her to finish her task, and it still works. <laughs> First then, um, I love it. Yeah, it still works. And yeah, the, the very important with her is just the routine. It has to be like uh, very consistent. It's hard when things change because she would ask why. And yeah, so. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned she has Down syndrome, which is, that's what she is. And sometimes we forget. Yeah, <laughs> we forget to tell everybody she has Down syndrome. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're people first. Yes. So Ian works Monday, Tuesday, Thursday at Virgin Hotels. He leaves the house at 8 a.m. on DART. We live in Plano, so he's got quite a ride. That uh, Virgin is down in the design district in Dallas. So he darts to work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. He leaves at 8 a.m. He finishes work at 3, and we just, this today, canceled all his dart rides home, and he Ubers home now. Allows him to get home faster for the afternoon activities. So Monday afternoon, he we recently engaged with the coach so that he has somebody else as a mother figure instead of me. 
um, he can receive that direction a whole lot better from another voice. Um, so he does that on Mondays, and then um, Tuesday he comes home, and that's uh, one of his days to work on his routine chores. Um, adulting is what he calls it. Um, he has an apartment at our house, so he uses the front door and our laundry room, um, but everything else he's self-sufficient. So um, adulting um, Tuesday afternoons. Wednesday he goes to my possibilities and takes classes, and our goal there is joy because being in the workforce in the traditional neurotypical world, he has to operate at about 110% capacity. So he needs days where he just gets to let down his hair. So Wednesday is that. Um, Wednesday afternoon, he's a figure skater. So he Ubers from MP to the rink, and he figure skates and you know does all his stuff. For, he's usually there about four hours. Um, Thursday, again, is a work day. He comes home, and he meets with um, a behavior specialist that we've just started working with. Just the, the pandemic was so hard that we've brought in, he kind of lost some ground, and things got hard. So. When I keep saying we've just engaged with this, we've just engaged with that, it's trying to bring him back um, after the pandemic and get him back level again. So um, Thursday works and then he works with the behaviorist on Thursday afternoon. Friday morning he goes to MP and does speech therapy and then just therapy therapy. Friday afternoon is a free day, Saturday is his free day, and Sunday he um, Ubers back and forth to church. He has a in-person church and an online church, and he's in small groups with each of those. So he has an online small group, and then Wednesday nights, an in-person small group. You can actually Google him. Um, Ian went to uh, Special Olympic Worlds oh, and placed no, no. fourth in, what, 2017? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, yeah. awesome. So he's a celebrity in the area. And I had the pleasure of recently being one of the, I say caregivers, he, he's so independent, I didn't feel like, I felt like I was on vacation, just being away from my house, um, while his family, while his parents went out of the country, and so I got to see all these neat things they have in place. So, and you're, he's also on the board of My Possibilities, yes. too. Yes, so. foundation yes. board. Yeah. <laughs> Braden is 23, he has autism and intellectual disabilities. Um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, he wakes up, I usually wake him up before, I, I'm a single mom and I still have to work, so he has had to develop a lot of self-help skills whether he wanted to or not, and so independent living was something that we pushed from a very young age so that he could have some um, self-sufficiency. So right now, um, I wake him up on Mondays and Wednesdays because he leaves the house at about 8.15, I leave the house at about 6.45. So I wake him up right before I leave. He does his own medication. He makes his own breakfast and sometimes cleans it up. Sometimes that doesn't happen until the afternoon. And then um, he has two ways he gets to his um, his day program. He doesn't go to my possibilities. He goes to Heroes Academy, which is a, the year-round program of the Heroes Day Camp that's for all ages in the summer. Um, and it's in Richardson. So he takes DART paratransit because we live in the city of Plano. We're in the dart service area, and so they set it up. He was not deemed ready to do the train, so they do door-to-door -door service for us. It's basically like a school bus, but it's more like a car. But it's the same idea as the special ed school busing because they go door-to-door -door with him. Um, and then he, I pick him up, or another day a friend carpools him on Wednesdays. And on the other days, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, up until about two weeks ago, he had a job. and That didn't work out, but he would... Um, get himself up, I would set about six Alexa alarms to make sure that he got up, and then a FaceTime, but most of the time he was up, and so, and he would do breakfast and get himself dressed in his full uniform for work, because he had a uniform, and then he worked from 11 to 1, so Dart took him there and brought him back, and then he would eat lunch, fix his own lunch after work, and just uh, hang out and do chores. He does all of our laundry. Um, he does all of our dishes. He takes out the trash. Um, he, we live in an apartment. There's not a lot of sweeping, but he will sweep and clean that stuff up. So he does a lot of household chores. Um, now completely unprompted, so he'll just do those things. And so um, that's the weekdays. Right now we're in, in between because he's going to get some behavioral therapy soon. 
but we're sort of in between that. That was just based on the work performance. We decided to go back and address some little issues so that he could be more successful in his next placement, and that was working with Texas Workforce Commission. And then uh, on Sundays, we go to church together. Can you tell, isn't there a little story about a day that mom overslept? Yeah, that's how I learned he had these skills. Um, I was homesick from work. I still had a caregiver coming in in the mornings to wake him up and get him to school and make sure he got on the school bus when he was still in school. And um, I had, I was, I woke up sick, so I called into work and I went back to bed thinking, well, she's going to get there and no problem. While I was asleep, she texted me that she was sick and wasn't coming. But I didn't know that. I woke up when he left my house. Fully dressed, breakfast, medicated, bus came, got on that bus, did the entire routine with the exception of locking the door on his own because he didn't have a key. So um, I was like in a little panic. I ran downstairs. I thought, where did he go? Was there a bus? I think I had a ring doorbell then and I checked and I saw that the bus had come up. And then I added cameras all over my house. <laughs> so that I could check. And then she still came for a while, but we eased him out of that because he was able, that's how I learned he was able to do it on his own. Love it. Yeah. So Thank it was you. like, oops. Well, that was a good accident, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, Evan is 20. He has autism. He has two jobs. He spends most of his time at one of them on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. He gets up by himself and he makes his own breakfast and pretty much is outside waiting for Lyft through Collin County um, for his office job that he's at 9 to 5. And then usually Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, except if there's something going on and he needs to take a day off, he works 3 to 11 at Kroger. And we live around the corner from Kroger, so he just walks. He would walk in the snow, sleep rain, whatever. He does not want us to take him. Um, he yeah. wants steps. Yes, he likes steps. That's what he I'm wants. <laughs> he's got the app. He's got the, there's an app called Cozy where you can yes. organize your time. He's very structured with that and he's very health conscious. You know, and so if he has a soda, he can't have one till the next day. And You know, he's very good about being healthy and you know it's just all in his effort to try to uh, be the best he can be so when he um, walks that's part of the reason why he wants to walk I think he likes seeing people that he knows whatever at Kroger because it is the main one in Prosper of course he never tells us I hear about it from other people but um, is he ready the one up here? Yeah, right on oh, the one I'm pressed in. Yeah, he's um, so been there three years. He's, he's been bagged there three your years, <laughs> and he loves it because <clears throat> things that are mundane to most people, he finds interesting. Like we don't eat this cereal, but this person does, and then he'll see how much it costs, and every every total is different, and things that um, me or you would just not even think about it. he enjoys it, so it, it's a good fit yeah he really enjoys working those we t he takes days off when he needs to do something else but pretty much that's what he does what, <laughs> what he does but he gets himself ready he makes his food he does his laundry he cleans his room he does the dishes he rides his bike to work too right he doesn't there's no sidewalk on Preston oh. so it's really hard so, um, can't get he, steps riding a bike. Yeah, you can't get steps. So. <laughs> We've talked ankle. about it. <laughs> on your ankle. We've tried, but he does ride around the neighborhood in the mornings and stuff before he goes to work sometimes. If he's working at Kroger, um, he does like to, to go around. And he um, processes memberships to the airline clubs, right? I don't understand it, but. We like the animal <laughs> clubs and stuff, and I think his numbers yeah, are Yeah, like, puts together travel packages. Yeah. yeah, and his numbers are just really, really high. Uh, his production numbers are just... Yeah, I don't understand that either. He just says, oh, we did eight batches today. Or, and he has a friend there that he um, works with. He likes playing with him and talking to him, and they text um, days they're off, too, all the time. He just enjoys it. And then he likes singing. He's in the Frisco Crawl with me, um, and he... Love singing, and the guys are great there with him. Want to make sure he fits in. And 
and he was in the top choir all through high school. So, you know, we're always wanting to connect our students with things that they enjoy for when they leave high school. So he that was. worked out really well that you were involved in that. Yeah, I, always, I put him in piano lessons when he was five, and he just has always loved music and always done really well with it. And his sixth grade um, choir teacher ended up being in charge of the um, high school choir teacher. So he actually called me the summer before his freshman year and said, hey, we want him in varsity choir. And they went to New York um, and sang at Carnegie Hall his oh, freshman year. Wow. And that was, I think, part of what helped me get him um, very um, independent. Because it was hard for me to let him go. I wasn't going to let him yeah. go with just, with just the choir. So I actually went, but he didn't need me at all. He stayed with the choir and had his roommates and did what they said. And I just kind of wandered around New York with my <laughs> he didn't meet me at all. <laughs> he was so excited. <laughs> that was his freshman year in high school. That's amazing. Do we have an addition? So do you want to introduce yourself and tell us about your son and maybe his interests and uh, what kind of routine he has? Uh, my name is Christina. My son is Andres. Um, he's 18 years old. Um, Andres got diagnosed with autism at three years old. Uh, to age 28, he they get diagnosed with um, sensory dysfunction disorder first. Um, when we heard about autism, I was clueless. I did not know what is it. It's 18 years ago, it wasn't as known and understanding as of now. So I told the doctor, I remember um, telling him, I was like, what it is and how I'm gonna cure my son. Is it a pill? It is a therapy? What it, what it is autism? Um, then it started the journey. Uh, Andres did not speak until he was eight years old. When he was diagnostic, he was a severe kid. Uh, did not say one word. Uh, kept hitting his head on the walls, uh, biting himself, uh, throwing up, uh, screaming. Never slept for eight years. And if, if anybody experienced that, that's actually, I, I've been through it. He around around the house all the time. Um, especially at night, it was like a nightmare for us because we take shift and we work me and my husband. So we take shift. Yeah, we take shift. He sleep like probably three four hours, and I sleep three four hours so we could stay awake with him. Um, all my my. I went to so many doctors. Uh, if you if you name it, I went. If you if they told me to travel, I went. If there is a therapy that they somebody said about it works, I did it. Um, eight years. Um, nothing was Andres like like I couldn't. I felt like he was in a bubble that I couldn't go through that bubble to him. No eye contact whatsoever. It was it was really 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 hard. Um, but we did not give up. That's one thing that if, if anything that I will say today to any parent with autism or any disability, do not give up on your child because you could actually see them that they don't hear you or they don't listen to you or they don't look at you at all. They are taking this information and trust me, no matter what the severity of it, trust your gut. You're the mom and you're the dad. You will know more than the doctor. With all my respect, I'm a doctor too. With all my respect for doctors, nobody's gonna know your kids more than you, trust me. Keep going. Um, so, we kept doing therapy, we went to different school district, changed school district. We did all of it. And the rest right now is 18. He wake up by himself, he dress himself, he do his own breakfast, he do his own set of vitamin every every week. He set it he set his vitamin, what how much doses he needs to take for everything. He do his own laundry. He clean he's very clean of course, you know. If you know I have kids with autism, they are very kind of they like their stuff clean and neat. Uh, that, at least mine. Um, his room is always cleaner than mine. Mm -hmm. He cleaned my laundry. Mm -hmm. He put them away. Um, he is responsible on the dishes. 
taken the dishes out of the dishwasher, put them back, the, the dirty one in. He take the garbage with every Wednesday because Thursday the garbage will come. Um, he feed the fishes. We have a salt water tank, and if you have a salt water tank, you know how hard it is to maintain that tank. It's not easy because you gotta do the chemicals in it. You have to change the filtering. You have to do a lot of things to the tank. He keep the tank really well maintained. He feed the fishes. Um, he still have no eye contact as like when you see him. If he's just sitting, you're not gonna know. Like every all of, all of our kids, they look normal, but. If you actually talk to him, he will look at you and then he will he wonder. So you know there is something it's like big eye contact. So one of the thing I mentioned to, to his teacher when he was young, I put a dot on my nose, like a marker. And do that with your young kids. It worked for my son. To keep the eye contact, I put a dot on my nose and every time he talked to me he gotta look at my dot on my nose. And that's helped him to keep the eye contact. So the report that the doctor gave me in the end, that they said he will never walk, he will never talk, he will never function in society. I prove all of them wrong. And I have six boxes full of doctor's visits. So don't give up on your children, ever. It will it will pass, I, I promise it will pass. You will have a different challenge every year. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be easy. It's never gonna be easy. You're a mother and you want your child to be normal like whatever normal is or whatever normal we call. But don't ever give up on your child because uh, trust me, things will get easier. You will have different challenges but it's become, you could look at them and you said, oh my God, I cannot believe he did this. Like the simplest things, you know, or the things that he say, it's just amazing. Like the other day we were talking about colors and, and a car, car passed by us and he mentioned a name of a color for the car that I never heard of it. I was like, what is it? I looked at my husband and I was like, what is that color? I never read it. He, like they could maintain all of the information that they read and you say. So don't give up on your children, please. That's one thing. And you have to work if you have a husband, if you have a spouse, if you have a partner. Both of you got to act the same way with him. Don't ever be one lean and one heart. You cannot be that way with, with, with autistic children. You have to be exactly the same. Both of you has to be on the same page. Like if, and the school too. Like, you have to keep a very close relationship with the teachers to let them know what you're doing at home that's work for you and what they are doing in a school that work for him in a school. And vice versa, like take information from them that it's working in the school and you tell them the same thing. This is what working for me. For example, the, the, his elementary teacher, she did a sheet with, with faces, like if he did good uh, through the day. That paper I laminated and I had it on my refrigerator for years. And that was his motivation. Not the candy, not the food, which is he loved food, but that page, when that pen go down in the face, it was like a disaster in my house. And why? And why you move it up? And why? I, what I did wrong? And what I need to do just to move that pen up? And, but they use that system in a school that I implemented at home too. So work together. Sometimes the teacher doesn't know what things is work for your child and things doesn't work for your child too. And it will be the opposite too. What so. school district were you I was in <clears throat> Carrollton, Farmer Branch. And then I moved to, the, to Prosper. Yeah, thank you. When I think we'll skip ramps because you've all been so great, we've answered some of the other questions. But on what you just said, I would like to hear about what tricks, aids, technology, it could be visuals, it could be um, you know apps, things like that, have you all used to help promote independence? And I'll just open it up to anyone that wants to chime in. We don't have to you know talk to everyone. Like one thing that I was thinking of when you were talking over there is for his communication when he was little, it's something that was so simple that I never would have thought of it though, is on the TV, the closed caption. 
um, having him see the words, that helped so much with his language. And he learned just so much from that. We have to watch with closed caption now, it's <laughs> even when he's older. It, and you had some, some other things that you, texting, the phone was- Yeah, he communicates way better via text, so everybody's different, but if, if they have the capacity for a smartphone, you know, the earlier the better. I would recommend, it's expensive, I know, but um, it can just unlock so many of their strengths mm -hmm. that you don't know about. And to piggyback on what she said, it does get better. Yes. We had some rough times too. Oh, okay. So, uh, but. So the older that they got, they got better? Yes. yes. Yeah, we were very yeah. strict when, when he was very little. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and we just, God. you know, we were bound and determined. We're not going to let it. You know, if we have to go to dinner at 4 o'clock when no one else is in the restaurant, we're going to teach him how to go out to eat. And, you know, the, the waiter might be rolling his eyes, but it's going to take a couple minutes, but he's going to order. And, you know, sorry, man. That's the way it is. And Do you tell people your kids are special needs? Can I ask questions? <laughs> Do we tell him, like, no, I didn't warn the waiter. Do I? I didn't warn the waiter. He just, you know, what do you want, Evan? And then Evan would You can tell these, these different, but so, you can tell. yeah. And, um, but I don't say warn people. This is what you get. Not, not warn. I'm not saying warn. I'm just telling people. When we travel, I always put autism shirts. We make use of every... Um, travel accessibility thing that exists. We use TSA Cares, we go to Disney and we use the disability pass, we go to Universal and we use their attraction pass. If there is a thing available, we are going to use it. And so I always have us in shirts, also so that if he gets lost from me, I mean, the perks are big, um, that the, one of the cast members or one of the employees can see the shirt. Um, used to when he was younger, we used to go to Six Flags. He hates it now. And the first thing I would do when we walked in the door of Six Flags is go straight to Lost Kids and say, this is Brayden, you might see him later. <laughs> and here's my phone number if you do, because he wouldn't be able to articulate my phone number. Yeah. But um, I tried very hard to push him out of his comfort zone. Um, we do closed captions too. We would eat at 4 o'clock because I we practiced restaurants. Now we can go anywhere. We can go to nice restaurants. And, always perfect but at least it works you know if there's chicken on the menu we're good um, but you know we go on cruises now and he eats in the main dining room and he orders off the adult menu with some modifications and they're like does he need a kids menu and I'm like no no don't tell him the one exists because then he's only gonna have chicken fingers but if he doesn't have that as an option he's going to pick something different um, we cruise with an organization called autism on the seas um, which is a travel agency and they have cruises that they provide support on. It's been really great, so we do that. We've done five cruises with them so far, and this summer we're going on a cruise of the Grecian Isles with them, so on that oversized disease flight. Um, we'll see. But I use a lot of technology too, which was the question. Um, a smartphone for sure. When Braden was in fourth grade, he was saying something none of us could understand. And at that point in time, academics, he was pretty much at a kindergarten level from all we knew. So finally one day, I'm like, spell it, and he did. It was like this whole sentence he spelled, and it opened up worlds. And then he spent, that was like in May or so of his fourth grade year, he spent all summer spelling things to me, which was fun when we were driving, because he didn't put spaces in the words, and I'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> but um, so when he gets to fifth grade, I told his teacher, I was like, guess what? It's not communication. I said, guess what? He can spell like anything. And um, got him an iPad. That opened it up because that was, there wasn't texting back then because, um, well, maybe there was. I don't know. I think it was still the, I wasn't texting back then. Let's go with that. <laughs> um, so, but he would do the notes option on the iPad, and he would just write pages and pages of stories and thoughts and ideas that were mostly quotes from movies or putting characters from one movie into another, but it was this whole world of literacy that I didn't even know existed. Beautiful. And he yeah. went from kindergarten yeah. spelling list to fifth grade challenge words in a matter of like two months yeah. at school because we didn't know. Did he always do all caps? Um, no, not always. 
He did. He he started out. When with, I had him, he did. I think he started out with all caps. Now he, he that autocorrect, and he really uses that. He's figured out the speech to text, which I'm like, oh, just type it. It's better. But yeah, um, he does that now. But we use a lot of Alexa at our house. Alexa broadcasts to send messages to each other. It's a two bedroom apartment. That's pretty lazy. Um, <laughs> but he's discovered that, and now I'll see on my phone because I get the Alexa alerts when he's alone. He just talks to Alexa and um, has her talk back to him, and so I see the alerts, it's pretty funny. Um, we have cameras, I have cameras in his room and in our main room so that I can make sure that he's safe and check on him anytime I want from work, um, which is great. I can also talk to him through the cameras. Um, then we have the ring doorbell camera so that if he leaves, he goes out to take the trash or something, I know that he's come back. Um, I have a doorknob that I need to install that's going to automatically lock thus far. He has not yet, or some wood, forgotten to lock the door when he leaves, but we'll see. Um, I just wanted to eliminate that as a problem. He cooks. He has certain things he cooks. He's afraid of the oven. I'm actually really okay with that right now because I also don't want to go home to a fire. Um, he uses the microwave for a lot of things, and he, I have a toaster oven that has an auto shut off. So as soon as the timer's up, it turns itself off. So he'll make, like, Totino's party pizza is his favorite thing to make in that. Um, and he eats a really good variety of fruits and vegetables. So just forcing him. Um, there were times we would be at the restaurant at four at Cotton Patch, and it was us in the retirement home. So just the two of us lowered the median age of the restaurant <laughs> by, like, 20 years. Because <laughs> um, it was always old people. Do you have any tricks for the microwave, making sure they don't put 15 minutes? Oh, yes. In fact, or aluminum. Well, we just, I, I bought a set of Ikea dishes, and these are the only dishes that can go in the microwave, and that was it. Just those, like, plastic cheap ones from Ikea, so if they melt, I can throw them away, because they're like a buck fifty for six of them. Um, and so he eats everything on those little Ikea plates when I'm not home. But the main thing in the microwave was, I woke up one morning, and I heard something. I went into the kitchen, and there were 63 minutes left on the slice of pizza in the microwave at 6 a.m., and I was like, yeah, that's some self-help skills we don't want. I think he had just pushed the six button four times to get it across there. So then for many years, everything in the microwave went in for a minute and 23 seconds. One, two, three, start. Mm. That was just the easiest way to do it. One, two, three, start. And then after that, he was able to start looking at directions and go one minute, two minute. Um, so that was what we did for a very long time. One, two, three, start. Yeah, that's great. awesome. Yeah. Yes. Do you have visuals around that? Well. I did until I figured out he could read. Okay. Um, he always does better with written instructions. I have a little like marker board that I write the chores I want him to do on. He no longer reads it, but he knows it's there. Um, he had a checklist on the front door for days he went to Heroes Academy and days he went to Penn Stack of what he needed to have when he left. Because we had a few days where we forgot our work lanyard or a few days where we wore the wrong shoes or something like that. So he had a checklist right there on a magnet on the front door that I used a dry erase marker board for, but he quit reading it. After he memorizes the checklist, he quits reading it. He had a checklist on his badge at work of his work tasks to do. Um, lots, yes, lot, it used to be pictures. Every now and then I'll still find one of those little board maker card pictures like in the closet or in a drawer from when he was younger. Yeah, those have helped really a lot, mm -hmm. the ones that you guys have. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah have we have a ton of visuals over there yeah. behind Shannon. Yeah. 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 Cindy, um, well, first of all, Ian is very intelligent. He's got, like, the most amazing vocabulary. I, I mean, better than my four adult children's vocabulary. Mm -hmm. David's, my husband's heard it. I mean, we were just blown away. Can you show, even though he you know, reads and does all that, what visuals you use to help with his routines yeah, and schedule. I think one thing I'd say is we, uh, so Ian's 40 years old, and I feel like we're kind of on the front edge of the way for people with Down syndrome and just changes in the world, children with um, differing abilities. So we took all of our extra years on the front end. So he did kindergarten twice, he did preschool twice, he did kindergarten twice, he did first grade twice. And the reason we did that was to get him as strong a reader as we could before he went on. And so that he was a tiny little guy, so he could mature as much as he could. And so that later on, his friends weren't graduating and leaving without him. And I think that served him well. Um, we've always, um, I have a cousin who had Down syndrome, and um, he was married and drove a car and all this stuff back in that he was born in 1950. Mm -hmm. And so I can remember talking to my aunt, like, 
you know, what did you do? And she said, well, we, they had five boys. And she said, we treated them like our other boys, no questions. So that was kind of the way we did with Ian, and we never changed our vocabulary for him. We just spoke the same way we always do. So, and it was so cute one day, this was recently, we were talking about something music, and he goes, well, that's not the genre I like. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Whoa. Um, so this is, is um, show them which thing. This is, this is his weekly schedule here. We got um, every day, and we just, this is just a folder, and we put the jobs um, down, and like there are eight jobs a day, and then these, the front is cut into pieces so it'll hang down, and when he completes the job, he just folds it up and it clips, and however many jobs he completes in that day, it, it equates to points. And then he's got a thermometer, that thermometer, and we put the points over there. The thermometer equates to cash. And the um, thermometer's on the other page. Yeah. Here, this is the side where he, and then he, this is just showing you that it all opened up, and then here's when he's like done it halfway or something like that. The other thing we did, um, and this was later on, I can remember, um, talking to somebody one time and the, you know how sometimes you just want to prevent your kid from having pain out mm -hmm. in the world and so you know I'm trying to massage the world and make it more accepting and all these things and somebody said to me you have to stop being the no for the world the world if the world is going to tell him no he has to learn no from the world not from you because then all of his anger or frustration is it you because you said, you know, I don't think so. So the the moment that, like, when all this came to pass, we lived in a small town in Pennsylvania. He loved firefighting, had ever since a kid, everything. He comes home one day, the volunteer fire department, in this town where the Carnegies and the Mellons lived. I mean, this is not a rinky-dink fire station. They had hook and ladder trucks to service the mansions and all this. They had a sign up that said accepting applications. He comes running in one day and says, uh, they've got signs up, I'm going to apply. And I'm like, oh, I did, you know, let the world say no, let the world say no. So I say, okay, buddy, but you know what you might do is just go meet them first, like let them know who you are. So he leaves, goes over to the fire station, comes back with the application, <laughs> you know, oh, cool. meet him that for that long. He was, back then he was 18. <laughs> he filled out the application, took it back the same day, the fire chief called me the next day and said, I've got Ian's application, how are you with this? And I'm like, um, well, okay. I mean, like, he couldn't go into a burning building. He goes, no. Like, we have hose, hydrant, and equipment people that don't enter build burning buildings. Are you okay with that? And I'm like, yeah, are you? And he goes, well, I'll put it to vote. 32 firefighters unanimously voted him as a firefighter. Oh. They took it to the board of directors. The board of directors unanimously voted him as a firefighter. The state of Pennsylvania paid for him to go to 66 hours of state mandated fire school training. And Ian, who is afraid of masks from all the hospitalization and afraid of heights to this day, passed all the fire exams, climbing up ladders with a mask, you know, the breathing apparatus into a building, you know how they do fake smoke coming out mm -hmm. the second, climbs the ladder to the second floor, gets his way out, passed everything except the math, and they made him a probationary firefighter mm -hmm. for as long as we lived there. Definitely. So, it, you know, that was when he was 18, and so I'm so grateful that I, because I'm a soft, like soften, soften, I, no, mm -hmm. nobody who needs to hurt around here. And it served us well to this day of letting him, and you know, a lot of time, there's a lot of mop up sometimes, like I'm mopping up some stuff right now, but um, he, he gets to live his life. That's amazing. That's actually beautiful. How did you ever leave the town? Like, how did the transition? <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. right? Like, I would have left, never, I would have stayed there forever. But yet, something we happened that you had to move work. to. So, okay, so I just did that a year ago, and it's been oh, it's horrible. really hard to, yeah. I take him back, like I take him back to go see them, and they still throw a big party. I mean, they uh -huh. love him. And it's so, I, I don't want to take too much time, but this story is so great. So we were in western Pennsylvania. These are tough, like steel workers. They don't crack many smiles. They're just, 
and they're big, and so we were having to leave, we are having this party, and brought all these firemen, uh, invited them, and uh, is our going away party and Ian's graduation party. These two big guys, I'm standing there talking to them, and I'm just tearing up, and I say, you guys changed our lives. I mean, you don't know what you did for us. And Sam, they call Sam Bruno, was just t never, I mean, this isn't a guy who cries, right? His eyes just fill up with tears, and he says, don't say that. You don't know what that little guy did for us. And I think, that's it. You know, when the world is right, and, and it took not standing in his way, they get the blessing of our kids. Yeah. Yeah. Sam Bruno and all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Anybody else want to add anything else about it? Well, about saying no to her child. Because when Althea was born, um, we didn't know she was going to have Down syndrome. Like in the Philippines where she was born, there was really no test. So when she came out, I mean, I was so nervous, but I didn't, all of a sudden, like, I don't know anything about Down syndrome. And then they tell you that she has heart problems, she cannot hear, her thyroids are all in 24 hours. So, I won't let her go out. I won't let people come. Because what if she gets sick? Yeah. And then um, he told us she's going to have a heart surgery. I'm like, she needs to be strong for her to have a heart surgery. But she just keeps getting pneumonia after pneumonia, um, a lot of viruses and stuff. So, but then when she was, she had her heart surgery, she got better. I remember it was her BBCD teacher who told me, you need to let her do her own thing. Because she's like, she's going to ride the school bus, right? I'm like, no. And she's like, why not? <laughs> she would argue with me. That's why it was really, really very important for me to listen to teachers. Because like, they've been, they took care of all these kids before I took care of my kids. And so the first time she rode the school bus, I'm like, are we really going to do this? And like, I was like, school bus and stuff. Was she? she was three. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she's really going to do this? I was, oh, but before that, we tried daycare just to see how she does. We stayed in the daycare like, what, hours? Because <laughs> I didn't believe her. And then she's like, and then I see she's, she's playing with other kids. She's riding her bike. And then um, when it was actual, the actual school, She's like, I don't allow feeding bottles here. Like, oh my I'm god, like, she's still drinking from a bottle. Because she has always like issues with texture about eating and stuff. But the teacher's like, no, you need to do something. She's really firm. I still talk to her after now. She's, like, <laughs> yeah. she's really firm. No, I do not allow feeding bottles in my classroom. So what we did is we invited the kids in our neighborhood. Kind of like I had a juice party yeah. where everybody's going to drink from a straw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Althea saw them drinking from a straw. And like, yeah, she before she went to school, she's like, we don't have a feeding bottle. CP cup is OK. <laughs> she's like, yeah, CP cup is OK. So and then, so I mean, there's just a lot of things that I was so afraid of because I want to just shelter. Like you said, your son was in a bottle that you could go through. I wanted to build a bubble around my daughter because I didn't want her to like, get sick or hurt and all those stuff. But then I was just so fortunate for people to tell me, like, you need to let her do her own thing and be independent. So, and sometimes I feel like we did, overdid it because sometimes she will, I prepare her clothes and then she'll put it all back and she says her own clothes. She'll put her clothes. <laughs> yeah, and then, or um, She's like. She's a teenager. Yeah, and then when the time, like, it, I mean, she takes a shower by herself and then sometimes I'll be like, come on, hurry up, we need to, like, you know. Because she's she always takes her time, <laughs> uh, so I do it, and then okay, you're done. Why not? Like, she doesn't come out. You know why? Because she will take a shower again. Because she's I want to do it by myself. So she she would always do it by herself. She she pretty much does everything. I always because she doesn't want mommy hovering over her. So I ask her sisters, can I go check? Because if she sees me, she'll close the door. Because <laughs> she knows like I always want to like help. And then I always ask permission. Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to help you do this? And she'll be like, sometimes she'll say yes, but most of the time, not I'll do it. So which is like, so it's really, really like something that for me is something that I have to like overcome is to let her be independent. Mm -hmm. So it was hard, but I mean, it, I guess it, it was okay. <laughs> like what she said, that 
sometimes we do forget that she has Down syndrome. Like, wait, she has Down syndrome, that's why she cannot do this. We're, we're so used to making her do all the things that I mean, her, sisters. Uh, her sisters would do, and we would bring her to places, and they'll be like, hold on, it's Down syndrome. And uh, sometimes we need to take a break and wait. Well, let's let's make her try it and yeah. let her figure things out and let let her fail and then try again. And and we were so surprised. And you were saying that they will snap out of whatever you want them to teach. One day, we were. When was that? Like when she was in fourth or fifth grade? She has her training wheels oh, yeah. on her bike, right? And we're like. Should we remove it and try to see if she actually knows how to ride it? And of course, the mom in me is like, no, she will get hurt. No, she, she will, will fall. Get hurt. And she, so we took it off, and we're like, I'm there, ready to run. <laughs> I put on my running shoes, and like, I'm going to dive and run and whatever if she falls. And she just started going oh straight. And I'm like, where is she? <laughs> she was laughing. And she was, she was laughing. And she's like, you guys didn't even know I know how to ride already. Yeah, she just right. went straight. And she does roller skates. She doesn't like figure skate because she says it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> she does um, roller skates. She always has like um, issues with some texture. She makes her fruit smoothie. She slices the, the strawberry like she's slicing a, uh, a steak. But she she has will to never use touch the fruit. Fork. Yeah, she will never touch what she slices mm -hmm. like that. But she does her own fruit shake and stuff. And um, yeah, she, it's just like amazing that sometimes we think she can, she's not absorbing what we're telling her because in school she's different. She uses a communication device in school. At home, she doesn't even bring it out of her backpack. That's why sometimes she goes to school, her communication device is not even charged. I always text Mr. Lancer, I'm sorry it's not charged because I mean, we never use it at home. Because that's the other thing is she's different in school. Mm -hmm. She's the of the Mr. The Lancer always tells me how amazing she does reading and math and also she never does that in school. I, I mean at home. So sometimes it's hard for me to believe really she did that. Like yeah, she did that. I'm like, oh okay, because she never I don't know why, but she is always different at home than she is in school. I guess school is just school work. At home is different. I think that's probably what she she thinks. So well, that kind of leads into my question. What lessons have you guys learned from teaching your child independence? What was the question? What lessons have you learned from teaching your child independence? Not to, uh, not to have, well, I've learned patience, but at the same time to not have lower expectations. Yeah. yeah. And There's more things that they can do. He has an older oh. sister who's, um, she's not special needs, I don't know what to do. She's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we've always tried to, you know, you said she's the same as her four siblings treated. Mm -hmm. We, so we try, you know, well. obviously yeah. there's going to be some things, but we've always, um, you know, here's the bar, and it took his sister this long to get it, and it might take him this long to get it, but it's still... He'll get there. Yeah. So. Not to underestimate, I mean, like the story about I woke up one day and he was fully dressed, medicated, out the door on the bus to school independently, and I had no idea he had that skill. I didn't know he could read a clock. I mean, <laughs> so just to not underestimate. It's always just been the two of us. His dad and I divorced when he was two, then his dad died when he was in sixth grade, so then it was really just the two of us at that point because he didn't have the weekend time with his father. Um, and so it's just the two of us, and so it's easy to kind of underestimate or do too much sometimes. Um, but, you know, I've really learned as he's gotten older and if I push more and more on him, and that's interesting that you have a chart where he earns money for chores because my son just does chores to keep busy. He, he wants to work. He wants to be busy. Um, his tested IQ is in the 60s. Um, so, but whatever that means. Right? Whatever that means. It, it means that he communicates to the rest of the world in that way. It's His communication is not always clear and concise. He's not always easy to figure out. Um, but boy, when he doesn't want something, everybody knows. Um, he was a severe behavior student. 
Um, in ninth grade, he was literally one-to-one -one all day, and he was in a class by himself in eighth grade. Because he was so severe, he sent other kids to the hospital with his violent behaviors. It was a little rough time there. Somebody said, has it gotten better as they got older? And I'm like, with that puberty dip, yes. But it was not all a straight sail up for sure. I never held him back because I wanted him to have more time in the older grades. Well, they wouldn't hold him back when he was younger. I tried a couple of times, and they were like, no, no, he needs to move on with his peers. And then I was grateful for that in our situation because the most growth he showed was in the adult transition program. From 12th grade to 22, that was when he showed the most exponential growth. When he had that, that purpose, it was no longer I'm doing like these, you know, test prep exercises or things like that, you know, the education bad word of testing. Um, these functional stuff. Yeah, he was at Home Depot was his classroom. So he was doing things at Home Depot. We learned a lot. We learned customer service is not his jam. But we learned that organizing and putting things and doing rote tasks is something he does well. We just now need to translate that to the right employment setting for him because, you know, it was a growing and learning experience and, and he felt like he had purpose. And so just, I think the theme I've seen from everybody here is that we've all taken risks. We've all put ourselves out on the ledge and held our breaths and watched our kids do the beautiful 10-point dive instead of the giant belly flop into the pool <laughs> that we didn't know they could do. <laughs> well, me, it's more of a realization. Because remember when we had that meeting like a, a, couple, a few weeks ago? Because I always feel bad and I work nights and I feel like I'm not there for my daughter all the time. But because of that, kind of like I was able to um, get her to be more independent because mommy's not there all the time. And so when you mentioned the detective in a real, it's, oh yeah, you're right. It's because I work nights, mommy's not there all the time, or if mommy's home, mommy's asleep. So it was um, a, a way, in a good way that I'm not there all the time, because like I said, I'll be like just hovering over her, like making sure, okay, you're not hurt, you're clean, you're okay. But since I work nights, and daddy works days, so we <laughs> kind of like tag team, take, 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 okay, you're tearing kind of thing. So it, it, it made me realize that whatever the situation is, um, we will be able to um, do things the way um, it should be done, where we can help our, our daughter, all, all our kids be, be independent. Yeah, and it's so true that we're, we're, we're oftentimes afraid of the risks, but they're ready to tackle it. <laughs> we might be scared, but they're for it. They, they will try it, and they will try to figure things out. Like the, the the time when she, she learned how to do her shoelaces. Oh, yeah. Like I'm gonna do it for you. And it takes her she, years to learn how to tie her like, shoelaces. I'll try. I'll, no, I'll do it. But she never asked for help. She eventually figured it yeah, out. Yeah. And we're like. Ooh. And then she'll be tying everybody's shoelaces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If she sees the shoelace, she'll be like. Yeah. If she sees somebody's shoelace, like oh, it's okay. She's gonna. Let me fix that for you. Yeah. yeah. What about? Can I ask a question? What about behavioral issues? Because I'm at a loss. Um, our daughter, and she, um, her, again, her PPCD teacher already told us she, she is very... Um, she has a stubborn, stubborn, stubborn streak. Yeah. <laughs> like, she, if she wants it, something, she, like, her shoe legs, she wants it, she doing the, that wants to do it on her children. So, she kind of like um, made us understand to use those, like those, ne not really negative behavior, but you know those kinds of behavior to make it in a way where it comes out okay. So we let her, um, like, if we want her to do something and then she'll be like not wanting to do it, then that's when like, okay, you need to do this. You know, like it's always like very important is the consistency. Like you always have to like tell her. What about like with other kids or other? <coughs> did she ever? That's oh, my my daughter's. Well, right now actually we're um, noticing some transition. Um, I don't know if it's being a teenager because before she would be sociable, she would be playful. Right now she is less sociable, which is kind of like I see my teenager daughter. Like she just wants to be in her room kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, but um, before that. She was um, pretty much okay with other kids. With other kids. And uh, what we noticed with her is, if you did something wrong, you no. talked to her, 
and like what you said, it takes a while to talk to her, but she's remembering all those things you're telling her, mm -hmm. you should not be doing this, instead you do this when this happens. And after a while, after a couple of days, couple of weeks, she'll start saying sorry. It takes a while, but she will say sorry and she will cry to us. And she will just apologize. What are you apologizing for? Oh, that day that she did something like this. And she, she would absorb it. And she, she, she knows. She knows that she did something wrong. And she would say so. I still get apologies for things that happened in 2016 every now and then. Yeah. He'll tell me, do you remember that time? Or like just today or yesterday he was talking about. No, it was today. He called me while I was at work. He, face, he loves FaceTime. FaceTime has been a game changer because he won't talk on the phone, but he will absolutely video chat. Um, he, he just needs to see me, I guess. Um, but uh, he called me and he was like, I was, I was sorry when I was mean to my grandparents at Christmas of 2020. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, you were. There you go. Um, for behavior, we just had a lot of practice. I tried, when he was in the Home Depot program, he had a really bad day one day, so I took away his phone. That was the worst decision I ever made in my life. They had to call me from work and I had to go to Home Depot and pick him up because he would not go in because he used his phone for work. It had all these alarms on it and he just flipped out, he laid on the floor outside and he screamed and they couldn't even get him in the door because he didn't know how he could function without it. So I had to come up with different options and I think with a regular teenager you take away their phone and that's like half the punishment. But. Um, that was like, I don't even entertain that as an idea now. Um, we just try different things, removal of privileges, and he just recently had to suffer the logical consequences, the natural consequences of his behavior at work because he showed some negative behaviors at his workplace and they terminated his employment. And you know what? It's a learning experience. I have to let life tell him no, instead, you know, instead of me, because that I, I had talked to him I'm going to say his employer, Penstack, gave him thousands more chances than I probably would have if I were in their shoes. I have no bad things to say about the way they handled it because they were gracious beyond comprehension. But it just was too many things to too many people, and so now we're kind of backtracking and we're going to pursue some behavioral therapy because some of it, he has a new rigidity with language that kind of just popped up. There's certain words we're never allowed to say, I'm never allowed to say, and it makes communication challenging when you can't say words like then or more or if or going to or want to or need to. Those are words that you use a lot, and I can't say any of those, and he stops me and tells me no. So we're working on that. That's our next challenge is to work through the language thing. I've tried by myself, and it's been unsuccessful. But now he's generalized that language thing to other people and not just me, so now it needs to be corrected. Therapy can help too because. Like what kind of therapy? Just behavioral therapy. Where do you get that therapy? Um, like a family um, type therapy place that maybe specializes in special needs kids. It might be covered by insurance. We did that and it was. And, you know, I coached softball for my daughter. And I would tell her how to play a certain way, and she did it. But then if, um, she just shut down after a while. But if the coach said to do the exact same thing, yeah. she would do it for the coach. Mm -hmm. Same with the therapy. If the therapist is saying it instead of you, because mm -hmm. they're just, after a while, if you're just a broken record, um, sometimes I, I think they just shut you down. But if they hear it from another source, then they'll want to please that person and they'll do it for them, and then it just becomes habit. So it can help. Like Ian was a coach that comes in. And at 23 right now, we're going to start ABA therapy for the very first time, and that's what the Texas workforce is going to do. Cognitive behavioral therapy is not really great for Braden because of his verbal communication skills aren't such that he can meaningfully participate in the process. So we're going to start some community-based ABA, I think, is to work on that language rigidity. Development pediatric will send you to a good ABA therapist that would take your insurance because legally insurance will pay for it, by the way, right now. <laughs> the agency but we're using only contracts with people like Texas Workforce, they don't take insurance. Mm -hmm. They only do contracts with agencies and stuff, so it's really designed to be short-term. Mm -hmm. How old? He's 25. Okay, well, that's a good age. 
We had the most amazing occupational therapist when Evan was young. He would love, one thing that drove me nuts, we'd go to Costco and he would want to go in the out and out the in. And you just can't do that when there's people coming and there's Especially lots of Costco. Kids, and you can lose your child when they're going the wrong way and you're, you're chasing them like this. And the very first time he went to this awesome occupational therapist, she made a game through the entire um, therapy center with, with in all sorts of languages and colors, ins and outs of all over the place. And the very next time we went to Costco, he went, we were going in and he goes to the out. Do I go in the out? <laughs> but he didn't do it. He didn't do it. It was just, she was able to make it fun. And like I said, not us telling him, you can't go in the out and out the in. And he spent a lot of time with her. She was awesome. Uh, yeah, he, I need to find her. Were you wanting to know about the code? Yeah. But, coaching situation yeah so it's that thing of he can't hear me anymore there's just a defensiveness so bringing in a coach and what kind of coach like a life like what kind of coach yeah so I've been working with two people um, they kind of team up they're special ed teachers so have some skills and then we just work together to form a plan on what so we're gonna work with from like Mm -hmm. and There's agencies that do adult coaching for special needs. It's a new niche. It's coming up. When Brayden was diagnosed in 2000, it was 1 in 500 were autism. Now it's 1 in not very many, um, way less than 500, 50-ish. So it's the need for adult services is growing, and it's just finally starting to catch up. Um, so by the time your five-year-old is an adult, there should be a lot more options. Like whenever Brayden was little, there's an ABA center on every corner now, and when he was little, it was my entire paycheck and then some would have paid for the ABA therapy, maybe, you know, at that, and it was no insurance that covered it back then. So he never had anything, anything other than school-based therapies when he was younger, but at the young age, let the school be the coach and partner with the teachers and get um, that in-home parent training and things like that that can be available. I use that invaluably. We use that at daycare a lot because I, I'm a school counselor and I already had kind of a background in behavior because that's my job. Um, I'm an elementary school counselor, but I use those parent trainings for the daycare centers because I had to have those because I had to work because I was single. And in Prosper, we call that family support, a okay. family support specialist. Mm -hmm. When Ian was, I'll say this, when Ian was little, it became very clear very quickly that consequences were his best teacher. So, um, like if we were somewhere and he did something that was inappropriate, like run away from me in the store or, you know, I don't know, do something on the playground, uh, without any emotion, because if I attached emotion to it, it would almost cement it in and he would do that thing again. If I responded emotionally, so I would respond with no emotion, and I would say something like, I'm so sorry that you chose to do that. We can no longer stay at the store. And I would leave over and over and over again. And many things that I wanted to do, we didn't get to do. Because he had to get it through his head that when you do these things, it's over. Mm -hmm. And that's it. No emotion tied to it. Mm -hmm. And then that you know carrying that forward sometimes I, I can remember reading a book and it said sometimes you can help consequences happen and so sometimes I would think how can I make this make a consequence out of this thing and I'm going to tell you something you can't tell anybody so I'm trying to get his him I was trying to get him to clean his kitchen and he you know dishes were stacking up and I'm like well the consequence of this and so this is how I would do it like what's the consequence of this and I think the consequences of this are like roaches so I explained to him, roaches, you know, that's why you have to do your dishes. And you can see, he's like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So I got a roach. <laughs> and I put it in one of, you know, and I set traps. And it's those little gummy traps mm -hmm. that you can get. And I put them in his apartment. And I said, we're just going to be monitoring for bugs, you know. And if you don't have any bugs, it's fine. You can do whatever you want. So I then get this roach that I found and stick him in that trap. And then one night, mm -hmm. after it had been there for days, he comes out. He, he was horrified. I mean, it was perfect because it was one of the one of the little. It's one of those big roaches. He was mortified. You can buy him in a pet store. Mm -hmm. oh, no, you can find him in the school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 I think it works well.
but now he does his dishes? He does his dishes. And But the thing is, sometimes it's like I couldn't, I would think, if he keeps doing this thing, what is the consequence? And that's how sometimes I could figure out how to make it happen. When it's good that you can do, have to do a rap. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. When Andres was young, when he actually did something that he's not supposed to, we had a chair that we used to put it in an area that it's, um, it was in between the kitchen and the dining area and he will sit on that chair and there is a clock that's going to be in front of him and it, depending on how bad he did and what it was, that's how much minute he's going to sit on that chair and he cannot get up. Time that's out. time out. That was one of the behavior stuff that we worked on to pass the behavior. When he was young, that chair worked really well. Don't ever send them to their room, mm -hmm. please. Mm -hmm. um, um, that chair helped a lot with a lot of things because the minute that chair out, he knows he's going to sit on that chair. And every time he got up, you put him back in that chair, no eye contact, no word. Not even one word you say to him. You just grab him and put him in that chair. If he got up, you're going to grab him and put him in that chair. If he does it a hundred times until that time finish, then he can get up. When he's old right now, we have a talk, and he has to write about it. And he has to say a couple things. How, why he did it, and why he think it was a good idea, why he think if it was a bad idea, and what, how, what are he going to do to fix it. And after <coughs> he finish that, writing it, we're going to read it, we're going to discuss and talk about it, shred it, and we throw it in the garbage. And oh. it's gone. And we have a form for that here in the Family Resource Center. It's called the Social Autopsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Yes, it works amazingly with older. Is he so, is he in school much? Yeah. Yeah, he's eight. When Brayden was younger, I couldn't get him in a chair. And it, I'm not forcing him because everybody always said, what are you going to do when he's bigger than you? And I was like, well, I don't him through physical intimidation so I guess buy him longer pants I don't know because um, he's a foot taller than me now <laughs> but um, I, it took a long time to find his currency that's what I said find that currency but one night we were going like at it we were arguing about I don't even know what but I'm stubborn and I was gonna win and he's also stubborn and he was gonna win so that worked out really well for both of us um, but I had taken everything I could think of away from him and he didn't care. And he literally was sitting in front of me in his socks and underwear. And I was like, give me your socks. And he absolutely lost it. No! And I was like, oh, I found it, I found his socks. <laughs> For about five years, I put his socks in timeout. Because he loved his socks. And that worked. We would be somewhere, he'd be throwing a fit, and I'd be like, sock. And he'd stop, and he'd have to take it off where he was and hand me his sweaty, gross sock. <laughs> the parts that I didn't think out through well. But um, I'd set a timer on my phone, and whenever he was done throwing his fit, he could get his sock back. Did it stop working after a while? It, it stopped, I stopped needing to use it. Oh, I, I suspect if I asked him for his socks now, he probably would give them to me. But I haven't really had to resort to that. We haven't been in that kind of situation where we've... I bet. But we left a lot of carts in the grocery store. We left a lot of food at restaurants where I just threw money and ran. Um, we've left a lot of, you know, fun activities early because if I said we were going to leave, we had to leave. That was it. Get there was nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Follow through. And then that was like before there was grocery delivery, so I was like, well, we're going to eat. <laughs> we're going to eat food. So that was, yeah. Not letting so how did you guys, did, did your behavior, your son's behaviors, um, Spike through puberty. I've got a 13 year old who has autism, autism and is nonverbal. Yes. Um, and he is about six inches taller than me and my size. He became very, very aggressive. It was mostly at school. See, he's the opposite. Yeah. He, oh, we had a great day. And I'm like, what? So ask, them, and like, ask them what's different. Ask them. Try and figure out. Sometimes it's the release of the safe space. They say that, and I'm like, but I don't want to be that safe person because it hurts. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's every day different. I feel like yeah. Right? So, but uh, it was it was just really I just had to power through. I don't have any tips other than grin and bear it. And we used a lot of medication. You did, maybe yeah. both of us. 
Um, definitely him. There's a couple times I went to the doctor and I said, one of us is leaving a prescription and I don't care who. And the doctor would be like, well, let's start with him since he's the patient. <laughs> so um, he was, he had a lot of medication through puberty. He worked his way off of some of it and the dosages have come way down since then. So it was a short term, but a much needed. I hospitalized him because his behaviors were so severe in seventh grade. Um, like I said, that's when he sent another kid to the hospital. He yanked a bookshelf and sent down on that kid who had to go and get stitches. It was really bad. Um, CPS was involved for the school, for supervision. It was this whole big ordeal. So I don't really recommend getting to that point. Are you in class? You said you were playing. Uh, we're, he was in Plano ISD at that time. Uh -huh. um, that was one of the things that facilitated me moving him to Frisco ISD. I live in the city of Plano, Frisco ISD, but I'm a Plano ISD employee. And I just needed some separation from my job and my tough, tough, tough kid. If anybody has a pediatrician that works with these kids, psychiatrist or neurologist? Or yes, all Any, of those. Uh, yes. yes. Our neurologist that. actually but fired I mean, us afterwards. She if you said she had run out of things info. to do. Not fired like meanly. She goes, I don't know what else to do for him. So she sent us to psychiatry. The psychiatrist he's been with since then, since he was 13. She's been really good for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anybody has any recommendations for doctors, I would gladly take that. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> it's my turn to ask a question. Okay. Um, let's see. And we might have covered them all. I know, we, might we really be, we might did. Be yes. What's your suggestion? Um, Could I yeah. piggyback off something she said? Yes. Sure. Um, I don't mean to point, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You mentioned, and this may not be a strength, every every person's different, but if their strength could be maybe not verbal communication, but writing, mm -hmm. um, encourage them to write. Like when Evan has an issue at work, he now writes a note and gives it to the manager, mm -hmm. or he'll send an email. Well, I, we learned how to do that. Or the texting, like you said. Or texting, mm -hmm. yeah, but he has his boss that he, he has a... a office job, he'll just send her an email with what his concern is, or he'll just handwrite old school a note and hand it to the Kroger manager, and because that way he gets all his thoughts out, nothing falls through the cracks, and it's documented, so mm -hmm. it kind of covers all the bases, but it, it helps him also know that he is um, fostering his own independence, that's why we're here, right? Mm -hmm. So, it, it, yeah, mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's, a, it's a great way for, you know, and we Learn that the hard way, but now he just writes it out. Well, I love how all of you have found different tools. That's one of the big thing I always, things I always focus on is tools. Um, and they each seem to have tools that work for them. And I think it, it sounds like you just got to keep trying as many tools as you can. And that phone can't be taken away because it's a tool. Mm -hmm. And also not only tools, but your resources, the people around you. Um, you can't do it all yourself. You need tools, you need p other people, you need resources. So that's one of the biggest takeaways that, that I found from this. It's amazing and inspiring. Yeah, your stories are amazing, you guys, and so helpful. My little one's only five, but this is probably the best thing that I've heard, and I so needed this, so thank you. Mm -hmm. And now if each of you could just share something that you would like to tell the parents no matter what stage they're at, just the most important thing for you that you would like to share with them. There's a lot of positives. Can... He'll never do drugs. Yes. He'll never, yes. Get, he'll never get in with the gang that is bad. That's true. Or all these other things you see on the news. Yeah. Um, you know, and just be patient. My car insurance did not go up one penny when he turned 16. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> um, it's just my one piece of advice. When Brayden was diagnosed when he was about three, I gave myself a week to be sad and mad about it. And then I said, now I'm going to look for the fun. And I set out with that mindset. I made a very intentional choice to look for the fun and find the fun. And some of the experiences we've been able to have that I don't think we'd have had if we weren't on this special needs journey. He has gotten to literally fly an airplane with a group called Challenge Air a few times. Um, they're local, Google them, they have fly days. It's fun if you're not scared of little bitty airplanes. Um, and somewhat crazy pilots. 
because they let kids like Brayden hold the stick of ear, playing while you're in the back. Um, he got to be on the field at a Rangers game on the mound before the game, introduced as a representative from an autism organization for, you know, an autism awareness game. He did not get to throw out the first pitch, but he did bump into Nolan Ryan. Um, so, you know, little things that are big things. Like I said, when we go to Disney World, we're able to take advantage of the attraction pass, and we're able to ride all the things that he's willing to ride, which is not the biggest list because he's afraid of cats. Um, oh, he does lots more than my brother. I mean, he does zip lines and... Okay. He'll, uh, you know, he'll do a zip line, but not a roller coaster. I don't understand it as a flight. It's way scarier, but whatever. Yeah, so you just never know. He's, he's got weird splinter skills on that. But it's always to... I've always thought, I'll try anything once. I may only try it once. But we'll try anything once and see how it goes. And so we found cruising is a great way to travel. We have the supports. There's brakes. There's... You know, all different kinds of accommodations. Everyone on the ships is so, so incredible. Um, we've done it with autism on the seas and without. Obviously, I prefer with because there's people and there's someone to talk to at dinner that talks back to me because Brayden doesn't talk to me at dinner. But um, we just, we just, we'll try anything. We're going to Vegas in two weeks. Never taking him to Vegas. Don't know how that'll go. Just me and him. We're going to try it and see. But... And you just have to be willing to take risks and to put yourself out there and to push, push, push. Can you tell them your social media handle? Oh, sure. Um, I do uh, little videos on Facebook. They're called Reels. They're one minute long, and I do them. And so it's Jennifer Harrison Earp, if you want to look them up. We have a moderate following, I will say, a small Jennifer following. Jennifer Harris what? Harrison Earp, E-R-P is my last name. It's just my page. Um, so if you follow me, you just learn all the things I do during the day. And then also up at the videos, he does movie reviews, one minute oh, movie you, reviews. You got 2,000 views, you got a big following there. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> some, of our, some of our videos have six or 7,000 views, so he'll film videos with me. I do videos of how I'm taking him to the store and teaching him to grocery shop. He makes a list. There's a couple of videos of that process. And then there's videos of him just talking about things and then the movie reviews and whenever I've taken him out to experience things. So, That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, so I'm doing that. That's I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. um, when Ian was a baby, I had a mentor. She was a woman who helped pioneer mm -hmm. education for people with Down syndrome. And she said to me when he was a little baby, you know, the medical textbooks say he's stubborn. So the doctors that are going to treat him have been brought up with him being stubborn. She said, you can see him as stubborn or you can see him as persistent. One gets him nothing and the other gets him everything. Mm -hmm. And so I've tried always his life one night when I'm looking in the face of the hard thing to see what is the flip side of this or how can we mold this and shape this for good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for us, for let them try. Let them try things. They will figure things out more than we can ever imagine. Things that we fear, they don't fear those. They don't. They will try and tackle them. We as parents, we will try to be protective, but they will not protect themselves. They will try it. We're just there to be like a guide. All right, you need to stop now. You're going to get hurt. But let them explore. Like, Althea, Althea <laughs> learned to swim. And we were like, she's going to drown. <laughs> no, but she learned to swim. And things that you kind of fear that she won't be able to do, they will eventually do it in their time, not in our time. They have a different timeline. And we just have to wait a little longer. Just wait a little longer. And, and they'll eventually get there. Yeah. She does the zip line. I remember at Hawaiian Falls, it was a, a very tall slide. Mm -hmm. I said, no, she, she'll get hurt. It's just like, I want to go. And so yeah. <laughs> she did. Daddy just had to follow her. I was there downstairs. I mean, like, at the bottom of the... My heart was like, oh, my gosh, it's going to come out of my chest. But, I mean, you can... Oh, I don't know if like, what, you if heard all the laugh, inside. but the laughter is so precious. Like, you can see yeah. that she's having fun. So... I mean, it's still hard for me to let her do things. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a mom in me, but like my husband said, let them explore. I never know that she would ride a bike or roller skates because I'm 
I was scared for her to do it on her own. But then, like, later on, like, oh, you're doing it. I have a lot of videos, and I'm showing it to my friends and stuff. Like, so proud of her. Yeah. 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 Just let them try it. Right here. I agree with all of I mean, they said that exactly the same. I'm going to iterate exactly the same thing that they say. Let them try. Try everything. We tried with Andres to ride the bike, talking about a story about the bike. Every single summer. Nope. I buy every year a new bike until he was 16. And you learn how to bike at 16 years old. So don't, never give up. You never know when they, it's going to snap and they're going to be ready for it. 16 he was, he learned to bike. And now he go with the bike riding with me. So mm -hmm. now he actually cycle at home. So And mine actually said, I don't want to do that. And that's okay, right? Yeah, and I was like, well, then I'll quit trying. I'll move to something new. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to tell, uh, before we open up uh, for a few minutes of questions, do you want to kind of tell about resources that y'all have to help with all that? <laughs> well, um, first of all, everything you guys said was so amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I'm going to tell everybody to watch this video. Thank you, David, for videotaping it so well, because this is absolutely priceless to me. But I'm going to go back through the video and I'm going to take notes. Your quotes were amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and everything you mentioned, like Challenge Air, all of those little things, we're going to do a um, list and we're going to make sure all of that gets out so that you'll get all of those things. Um, so thank you. Um, and yeah, just a plug for the Family Resource Center if you're looking for resources, if you're looking for um, what. Uh, People that other parents have referred to come see us, come stop in. Some of our volunteers are here. So. We've got a mentor program. And and we have talked about mentor. having a mentor yeah. and how important yeah. that is. Yeah. Um, finding your people, finding friends that are there. Um, I joined a Facebook group about six or seven years ago called Awesome Moms. There was about 100 people in it at the time. Now there's 6,000, and I'm on the board of directors for the nonprofit. And so just finding you know ways to get plugged in and ways to help and what to do. Mm -hmm. People that get it. Yeah. Yeah, and anybody who wants my cell phone, I will be more than happy to share it with you guys. If you have questions, one day it's it's a hard day for you and you just want to talk to somebody, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. I don't answer my phone during the day at work, but yeah, I'm like, Facebook too. is always open. <laughs> yeah. Got two minutes left on the memory card. <laughs> well, so what we and people can stay and ask questions if they like, but um, we just cannot tell you how much we appreciate your time and talent and treasure that you're sharing tonight. Um, and we've got a little something special for you, so don't run off. Um, That's it. I'm going. We can end that, and I'm going to let you see if anyone virtual has any questions or mm -hmm. questions. So let's give them a round.